What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a video talking about different substance combinations. I hope you guys enjoy this video, drop a like if you do, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and real quick, before we dive into the video, let's just take a brief moment to talk about our good friend. This video is brought to you guys by MyBookie. With 162 games in a baseball season, it can feel like a grind to watch, but you can put the excitement back into each game with MyBookie. Head over to MyBookie for run lines, money lines, and props galore, and claim your deposit bonus today just by signing up with code GOBLIN. They will meet your first deposit up to 1000 so what are you waiting for? Just head over to MyBookie and good luck and have fun. Remember, sign up with code GOBLIN, and big thanks to my bookie. Big shout out to them. Now let's dive into the video. So the reason I'm making this video is because I feel with the kind of content I produce, it's important to also spread good information about harm reduction, right? Of course, I always try to encourage you guys to do your own research and never follow in my footsteps. However, I also realize that a lot of you might not do that. So that is partially why today's video is being made. Today's video is kind of a hybrid of both information and stories in a sense, as I'll be sharing my experiences with these combinations, as well as telling you guys which drugs that you just should not be combining. Now, first and foremost, I want to say that we're not going to be going through literally every drug under the sun. I'm just going to be talking about some of the really important rules of thumb that I at least go by when I look at what drugs to combine. Now, in the description of this video, there will be a chart linked with all of the different safe and unsafe drug combinations that you guys should always consult whenever you are considering combining substances. I mean, this is like homepage, like bookmark worthy to stuff right here, right? But without further ado, let's dive into it. So the first substance that I want to talk about in terms of combinations is one that you should outright never combine with pretty much anything else, and that's cocaine. Now, Looking at the chart, obviously, for those of you guys who look at the chart that I've linked in the description, you'll see that it says there's pretty much no safe combination for this, and that is accurate. The reason is, is cocaine absolutely annihilates your heart rate, and one of the rules of thumb with drugs is you don't want to do, you know, two different drugs that impact your heart rate in very different ways, right? Uh, especially if you get two drugs that really raise your heart rate, you definitely do not want to combine those because it can get dangerous, just like how you don't want to combine depressants. Cocaine is a category where it's one of the few drugs, same with amphetamines, where you really should should not be combining it with anything at all. I remember one of the stupidest things I used to do when I was younger, uh, during my Coke Chronicles phase in particular, is me and my friends used to do Coke and Molly lines. And the reason I did this is because I felt like I wasn't getting enough out of the Coke after a while. But I would always end up regretting it because I would feel like my heart was thumping through my fucking chest. I mean, I genuinely felt like I was about to have a heart attack pretty much every time I did this. To the point where it wasn't, it didn't even really feel good most of the time it was uncomfortable but I was fiending so hard to get fucked up that I would just keep doing it anyways this is one of those combination substances that you know you coke is something you should always do on its own you know maybe yes yeah, smoke some weed sure but in terms of other harder substances there's not really anything you can combine this with in terms of the drug chart that is linked in the description the only substance that isn't a risk to combine this with that is listed is benzos and that's because it brings you down which benzos you'll see are a common theme usually will bring you down from most substances with a few exceptions but you know an another rule of thumb that i try to have is i always try to avoid combining pills and that kind of gets us into our next segment here of this video Combining pills in general, although, you know, the effects might not be the most dangerous, is very rough on your liver, and your liver is something that you don't want to go wrong. Uh... It ends very badly when you have liver failure. There are tons of, you know, probably your favorite celebrities who have passed away from that kind of stuff. Uh, and my rule of thumb is I would just never mix pills. Not necessarily because I was going to drop dead that moment, you know, or it was going to ruin my heart that very moment, you know. However, more so out of the fact that my liver would get absolutely annihilated processing that many pills. Now... 
I luckily always went by this rule of thumb, for the most part, a few exceptions here and there, but you know, back when I was in high school, even then, I was never a very big opiate guy. The only combination with pills that I would necessarily partake in was Xanax and alcohol, and this is a very stupid one. This is a very stupid one. I know people who have passed out on this and choked on their vomit in their sleep, right? Very, very stupid combination to do. The reason being being is A, it is two depressants. An important rule of thumb is just like with cocaine, two stimulants, you don't want to combine those, you also don't want to combine two depressants. Honestly, the only category of substances that you should even be considering combining is psychedelics, and only a select number of those, which we'll get to in a bit. But in terms of pills, you never want to mix them with alcohol. That's even more brutal on your liver. Whether it's Xanax, opiates, Adderall, there is no pill that is safe to mix with alcohol. There's a reason that even on your little prescription bottles you get, with your recommended dose, they still advise to not drink most most of the time. It's because of your liver. Same thing goes with Xanax especially because not only are you fucking up your liver, you're getting the enhanced effect of the Xanax because it, it makes it feel much stronger. You guys probably know, at least some of you guys out there know, you know, when you're not drunk, you could take a bar or two and still somewhat function for the most part. I mean, yeah, you'll be barred out, but like I'm talking, you could still stand up and walk. T drink some liquor and take half a bar even? Good luck. Not happening, right? Absolutely no chance. My rule of thumb whenever I would do drugs is I would always avoid combining any pills with alcohol because it's just not a good idea. I know a ton of friends who used to do this in high school, and, you know, when you're young, it seems like a cheap, easy way to get extra fucked up. I remember being young and thinking like, oh, dude, it's just a boost and not listening to any of this shit. I'm much older now. A lot of my friends who kept doing that shit have either overdosed or died, and it's not very cool anymore. Now, coming in next to change the kind of tone of this video, let's talk about a substance combination that is actually okay. Now, of course, you know, if, if you have underlying heart conditions and stuff, then you shouldn't be really doing any drugs to begin with, let alone combining them, because obviously both of these substances will still increase your heart rate a bit, but not enough for it to be necessarily dangerous. And that's where we're talking about our psychedelics now. So LSD and Molly, a very well-known combination called candy flipping. I've done this before. I have a video on it. These two substances not only have synergy, together in the sense that they will enhance the experience of each respective substance, but also they are listed on the drug combination chart as one of the less dangerous combinations. I don't want to say safe because obviously it's, it's not really appropriate to say that combining any substances are safe, right? You know, the safest thing is just not to do it, but Risk management is very important as a drug user, which is why I mentioned that this combination is safe. With that being said, LSD in general is one of the drugs where it is technically uh, less dangerous to combine with most substances, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe to combine with all of them. For example, some things that you shouldn't combine with acid, once again, cocaine is one that you should not be combining with acid. Another one is amphetamines. Those are like brother drugs, you know, amphetamines, cocaine, speed, whatever, you know, category of upper, don't want to combine with the acid. Interestingly enough, uh, cannabis is also listed as a caution on this chart that I'm referring to. However, not because of the actual, like, body health issues, more so because it will send your trip to Jupiter, right? Now, let's move on and talk about some really bad combinations, okay? Now now that we've gotten the good combination out of the way, uh, like I said earlier, this chart will be linked in the description, and I highly encourage you guys to go check it out. So, let's talk about ketamine. Ketamine is one that for a long time, I didn't really understand how bad it is to mix with certain substances. I had no idea. I've talked about this in some of my previous videos, but my friend Ashton used to have what was called the K-Cramps. If you guys don't know what that is, it's essentially the shooting pains you get when you don't do ketamine. And the only way to fix them is doing more ketamine, right? 
Ketamine on its own is a substance that is already fucked. I mean, my buddy Ashton used to run to the bathroom in math class every day and do more K to get rid of his K cramps, you know? But in particular, one combination that my younger self used to abuse a lot was ketamine and alcohol. I used to get drunk and do some bumps and feel like I was Jesus. Quite literally, it gave me a god complex. However, it was not a safe combination whatsoever. Now, the reason that this combination is so dangerous and I advise against it is because ketamine on its own is a tranquilizer. They use this in vets on animals, right? When you combine that with alcohol, something that is a depressant to your nervous system, you are in for trouble. I mean, I'm talking you're going to full on incapacitate yourself for the duration of this experience, which is not a very smart idea whatsoever. Alcohol is yet another one of those things that you can't mix with very many substances. It, you know, very rarely will it actually enhance your experience. In fact, on this entire drug chart, the only substance that alcohol has any synergy with is weed. That is it. They have pretty much every drug category you can think of under the sun listed on this chart, which is linked in the description, mind you, and the only category on it that alcohol has any synergy with, pardon me, is cannabis. So if there's anything to take out of that, it is this. Alcohol should not be mixed with any drug. I feel like it's a very common thing. I used to do coke and drink. I used to do ketamine and drink. I used to do molly and drink. Alcohol I never thought of as that bad of a thing until I started learning more about drugs and my drug use and realizing like, oh, wow, okay, I've just been slowly killing myself for like six years, you know? It's okay to consume substances, but be smart and be safe about it. Learn about what combinations are safe. And if you really want to do two drugs in the same day, do one drug for breakfast and one drug for dinner, right? Don't go around combining them unless they have synergy. And even then, don't combine them, you know, just do them on their own. Now, let's move on to another category I want to touch on. Now, another one that I want to touch on here is DXM. I get a lot of comments about this. I know a lot of people out there watching this probably do this substance because it's cheap and it's very accessible, right? However, I want to touch on this because there's one particular combination that is very dangerous for this drug, and that is alcohol. Now, obviously, there's other combos that are very dangerous. For example, MDMA, opiates. However, the majority of people that are abusing DXM aren't spending the money on those other drugs. So I want to focus more on the cheap categories that are dangerous to combine it with, and that would be alcohol. Now, I've even done this before. I've combined alcohol with pretty much every drug I've done, like a complete idiot. Don't follow in my footsteps. However, the reason this is so bad is once again because of the stress you're putting on your liver. I mean, you can cause lifelong permanent liver damage from combining these two substances. DXM is brutal. Cold meds are brutal on your liver, just like most pills are, and same goes for alcohol, as most of you guys probably know. These are brutal on your liver, and combining them regularly, even once, is a bad idea. Another thing, and this is according to Dr. Google, right, just going to clarify that, is it says here that there is actually potential neurological damage as a result of respiratory suppression and hypoxia, which has reduced oxygen to your organs and tissues. Now, listen, DXM on its own kind of sucks, and combining them isn't fun either, so I don't really think that's worth nerve damage, but if you believe it is, more power to you. However, I just wanted to spread the information. Now, I'm going to have have this entire full chart linked in the description of this video, I highly encourage anyone watching this video to go check it out. Even if you've never smoked weed or done a single drug in your life, if you know someone, send this to them. It's very important to know what combinations are safe and what you're consuming and how it's going to affect you. I hope that some of you guys could have learned something from this quick little informational video, and I thank you guys for tuning into this one. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.